Ironically, guitar work done by Al Bavinas is also heard throughout the album. Ed and Mark incorporated his outtakes from earlier recording sessions into their new material. I guess it was just too tough to replace Al. Um, and I was... I guess uh, it got a little harder to write songs after Al left. It was really just me and Ed. It was a two-man band by this point, and we just had a lot of guest stars come in. We officially listed Paul Nodonis as a member to kind of make us look as if we were still a functioning band. So we actually had to uh, uh, get Veet, uh, Veet Kazis, our original bass player, back to play uh, to play uh, the sh you know our, our shows. I have I have memories of it. Um, you know I. I, I felt that, you know, stepping in, it sort of, you know, it gave me a little, uh, you know, uh, a, 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 a sort of, I looked back and, and, and enjoyed playing for Steel Wolf before, and, and going to play for them again was something that, you know, I, I enjoyed, and I, I would enjoyed it tremendously, and I would have done it again if I wanted to, and I had a great time doing it. There was one particular occasion where they had a gig, um, at this place called the Gidenese in Brooklyn. And uh, as it turns out, they got banned from this particular club a year before somebody had trashed a mirror and they were banned at this club. So it, it was an effort just to get them to play again after the, you know, the next year. And uh, they could only play under one circumstance. They had to tone down their more raunchier material and do covers. The audience that showed up didn't want that. They were demanding oral sex at gunpoint. They were demanding Alice's Beard of Clan. They were demanding Rip Shit Rampage. And V said, no, no way. No, we're not doing it. He walked off. I'll be honest with you, I have no clue. You know, maybe, maybe it was one of those nights where, you know, you might have had too many fuel, too many cocktails, which happened quite often with Steel Wolf. Then uh, I happened to be just hanging out drinking plenty of beer, <laughs> and uh, they asked me to fill in for the bass player. And um, we, we kind of discussed about what song we were going to do. They put me on stage. I'm basically drunk out of my mind. He had enough cocktails in him to, to uh, brave it up there, and he did. And, uh, you know, we did that, and Ed, Ed and I said to him, listen, you're in, man. And he said, great, and that's it. That's how Mike joined the band right down there. In the interim, Andy Laleka reappeared having recorded and released a pair of solo albums on his own label. My first solo album was called Return from Oblivion, and uh, basically I rented a four-track from uh, Sam Ash, and uh, I rented it for 48 hours, and I think during those 48 hours I, I brought it home, and I literally probably got maybe two or three hours of sleep because I had to maximize my use of that out of stupid thing. And uh, I did some dance versions of, of some heavy metal songs. Uh, you know, I mean, somebody had to do it. Solo efforts, Andy, I'm sorry. I remember listening to the uh, 80s version of uh, <laughs> Judas Priest. Uh, you yeah, know, it was a good advert, I guess. But, you know, that's Drew's music. I, I mean, I'm not into that type of uh, new wave music. And... Uh, Listening to Living After Midnight, you know, with four keyboards in the background wasn't uh, my style. I've actually used some of it in my student films as, like, background music. It's, 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 it's unique. I don't think anything's really been done like it. Uh, he actually claims he's going to do a third one, so that would be interesting. I would like, I would, I would, and since it's been about ten years since he did one, I would like to see what he would do now. I guess my, my concept is all good things come in threes. And you know you have Return of the of, of, you know Return of from Oblivion, the first first album, second album Take Two, and, and still you know have this third album which I need to do you know before before my dying day. So I just want to let my fans know out there you know that is coming. In the late '80s, Mark, Ed, and Mike invited Andy to play his keyboards on a new version of Rapid Descent into Oblivion. The band was re-recorded this heavy classic for use as a bonus track on their fifth release, a compilation of their most sought-after material. I don't remember the details, but again, I, I remember, I guess, 
they, you know, at this point they were ready for some sound effects. You know, I mean, it wasn't really, I mean, uh, the use of keyboards at that time, it wasn't really, it wasn't really meant for, you know, it, w it wasn't really, we weren't laying down any harmonies, but I guess it was more for sound, sound effects at that time. So, yeah, that it, that it worked. A lot of people wanted certain songs on certain tapes, and almost it, it just came to be out of a necessity. People said, you got a tape with Ripshit Rampage on it, and Anderol Sex at Gunpoint, and that like, new one, Cat House, on it. And I would say, well, yeah, well, yeah, but they're all on different tapes, and you can either like buy each tape. And it felt moronic to tell a guy, if you want each of those songs, you got to buy three tapes. So we just said, let's let's make a greatest hits tape with the ten best of the previous four, uh, you know, albums. The trio remained in the studio, recording tracks for what would have been their sixth album. One thing that really disenchanted us was the fact that we had ran an album cover making contest in a Lithuanian newsletter and we thought we'd get a lot of entries and stuff and you know people would be like and then we thought okay we'll use this one and that one but uh, no one entered but I think after that I just took a break for a few years and settled down with my lady and hung out with her in college and all that stuff so me and Mark kind of separated I think for a little while we only saw each other you know a little after that and I think actually even Mark at that time took a break as well. A few years passed before Steel Wolf resurfaced. After I married uh, Claudia, we had moved into our apartment and I had, uh, had to rearrange all my uh, music. And I came across like some of the nuttiest things. I didn't even believe I had some of this. Because so, it was just the unlabeled tapes and I just write Steel Wolf on it and then throw it in a box. And I, but I, I played every one of them. I was like, I was just having a ball listening to this stuff. So I said, I'm going to take this stuff, the best of it, and just kind of edit it down to a, uh, you know, a, a tape. That album cover, Claudia had done, my wife had done on a computer. She had uh, designed it. Claudia also helped the band out in another important way. The way I got back into it officially, I, was, I had been on a vacation in Colombia with my wife. I had turned to Claudia at one point and I said, listen, there's two things I want to do when I go back. But before I could say to her, I want to go on a diet and and and, and uh, learn Spanish, she had said to me, buy drums. And I went, let's make that three things. He told me he had purchased a drum set. And the first thing I a asked him was, I didn't ask him, are we going to jam? I asked him, when are we jamming? So I, for some reason, I felt the fire again in me. And... Um, we decided to get the band back together. But before I got Mike back in, I had to get Ed back in, because it was going to be me, Mike, and Ed. We went up to uh, Poconos, where Mark has his own summer house up there. And um, I thought it was just going to be a you know, weekend of our usual you know, alcohol consumption and all greasy food weekend. So of course he pumped me up with a, you know two six packs of beers and then uh, comes upstairs with this uh, broken down guitar and a half a drum set and I said let's jam and I was sh I was shocked I, mean, I couldn't believe it then I, uh, I guess I tried tuning this guitar and it was completely in shambles but just started playing it just felt so good to start playing again. 